America. In a few months' time, the World's Fair will be opening in New York. And so the building of these very modern designs for pavilions and amusement centers is making steady progress. The work is far ahead of schedule. A world of tomorrow takes its shape today. That's a news report from 82 years ago. World fairs, or expos as they're now more commonly known, have showcased the future of technology for nearly 200 years, since the first one was held in London in 1851. Some predictions have not fared so well. In 1903, at the World's Fair in St. Louis, cars were dubbed a passing fad. But twice, expos have predicted self-driving cars in 1939 and in 1964. We're still waiting. If the predictions by General Motors at that 1964 fair in New York had come true, we'd also now be traveling by jetpack and living in a colony on the moon. You're listening to Beyond the Headlines. I'm your host, Kelsey Warner, The National's future editor. This week we're asking, as Expo 2020 Dubai opens up to the world, how do we see our future? Before we start, please subscribe to Beyond the Headlines on your favorite podcast app so you can keep up to date with our latest episodes. First up, killer robots. No, it's not what you think. Can you see the underwater robot spreading fertile eggs over the One of the things Australia is most famous for is the Great Barrier Reef. I was moved by the idea, touted a few times during my visit, that it is the only living thing visible from space. The reef brings in more than $5 billion annually in tourism. News that the natural wonder has lost half of its corals since 1995 due to global warming and over-tourism has meant millions of dollars are spent every year to help save it. A lot of the money is put toward research and new technologies. Which brings us back to the robots we were speaking about. A killer, but as the director of the Australia Pavilion, Paul Sams, explains, also a lifesaver. The scientists have developed a way of uh, capturing the the seed of the coral, growing it up in tanks and vats, and then they use robots to to spread that seed across the reef for recovery purposes. They also use the robots to destroy some of the pests on the reef, so they track them down, track down the pests and get rid of the pests on the reef. Today, Australia's future depends on correcting the damage of the past. The Australia Pavilion began with a recounting of Aboriginal stories about the stars. For the Aboriginal people of Australia, the first Australians, the stars hold the knowledge. Since the beginning of time, the skies have guided us and determined our seasonal activities across our six-season country. This is a theme we will see elsewhere. Examples of pavilions looking back, attempting to share a national identity. In an increasingly globalized, connected world, countries looking to expand their horizons to grasp the future must also stay rooted in where they come from. One gets the sense otherwise, then what's it all for? Saudi Arabia takes this literally with visitors seeing depictions of past, present, and future projected on stunning screens. The UNESCO heritage sites like Alula and historic Jeddah, coupled with the giga projects of the future, like Daria Gate and Kidia, coming off the drawing board in the decades to come. The pavilion itself is a Guinness World Record holder in a few categories, as Saudi Arabia immerses visitors in desert, mountains, and sea through the largest interactive lighting floor ever, with around 8,000 LED lights and the largest LED interactive digital mirror screen. In this part of the world where rain is scarce, the water feature, the longest in the world, welcomes you in in a moment of zen. It's a wall of water. Have a listen. But 
that Saudi Arabia is a relative newcomer to Expo, debuting in 1958 at Brussels. Russia is one of the original participants, welcoming guests to its pavilion since London in 1851. Yekaterina Pribyktkova, a Russia spokeswoman, takes pride in the pavilion's place in history, more than she is willing to say about the future. A lot of great things from Russia have been introduced at Expo. For example, we had a great year in 1900 because Mr. Popov has presented the radio and also, believe it or not, Matryoshka, the one that everyone knows, the Matryoshka doll, the one with many dolls inside. Uh, Now it seems like it's been there forever, but to the international audience, it's been introduced at Expo 121 years ago. So, of course, Russia very, always took Expo very seriously and always tried to, to showcase as much as we can uh, in terms of our innovations. But what's showcasing without a little healthy competition? Showcasing innovations have, through the history of World Expos, had a bit of an edge. In 1962, the World Expo was held in Seattle, in the U.S., and the Soviet Union didn't attend. That year, America's exhibit focused on space exploration, smack in the middle of the space race and amid the Cold War with the Soviet Union. But then, in 1970, the Expo in Japan had both the U.S. and the Soviets touting their space programs alongside other exhibits. Today, with a booming interest in global space tourism, the massive commercial potential of low Earth orbit and possible Mars colonization, many countries have still dedicated large portions of their displays to humankind's fascination with the stars. The UAE, India, and the US are among them. Join us in exploring the impact of freedom and energy. At the US Pavilion, the theme of looking back to look ahead appears again. You can touch moon rock, brought back from an Apollo mission in the mid-20th century, and a few minutes later walk beneath a replica of a SpaceX rocket, the reusable technology, a harbinger of things to come in space travel. If the U.S. looks back and forward, then India looks inward and outward. Stay with me. Walking into the India Pavilion, you are confronted by two national pastimes, one ancient and the other modern, yoga and going to space. On the right, Amid walls of greenery are two men dressed in white, bending themselves into unlikely shapes. To the left, India is exhibiting its moon ambitions. The country wants to become a major space player and put Indian astronauts in space by 2022. The contrast in national pastimes is striking, if only because it is felt elsewhere around the world, pavilion by pavilion. The mix of identity and pursuit the declaration of who we are next to the things we build and aspire to. Which brings us to the world's happiest country, a place that is forging the connection between self and innovation. Welcome to the happiest country in the world. Severi Kainala, the Commissioner General of Finland at Expo, explains. Finland Pavilion's theme is sharing future happiness. This for us is much deeper than pure joy. Finland has ranked top in national rankings of happiness for the last four years. It's also a world leader in new tech patents per capita. We're talking about trust and uh, comfort in the future, that we can trust that our children have better world to live in than what we have. For what we need to do, what we need to do for that is to create technologies and ways of living that for answer to the big questions of today's, uh, today's world, namely the environmental issues and climate issues. We need to create technologies that use less energy, reduce our consumption, and reduce waste in the world. This kind of different solutions we are presenting in Finland Pavilion in materials, uh, raw materials handling, in uh, carbon catching, in uh, mobile communications, and many other areas, which will increase the well-being of human beings and consequently the happiness in the world. Severi believes the secret to the seemingly dual success is in focusing on well-being in order for the other parts to thrive. I think the basis for innovation is that you feel comfortable in your life that you can explore new areas and new thoughts. When your fundamentals are built well, when your health care, your children's education, your safety and security are, are solid, then it gives freedom to your mind to explore new ideas 
and when the system is supporting uh, research and education and exploring new ideas, it is a very conducive environment for new innovations. And I, I do believe that these same elements create the happiness for the people and makes them able to create new innovations. So consequently, we have happy people coming up with a heck of a lot of really fun new ideas that that actually do change the world. From the first World Fairs, where we heard the first crackling radio dispatches, to the excited journalist at the start of the show from 1939, and the flying cars we've been promised in between, our fascination with the future has driven Expo. And the future, as we know, is undefinable. So if you get the chance to go to Expo, I will give you this advice. Don't go looking for what Expo is saying about the future. Go looking for who. It's a place where you can walk among the robots, but it's the people who will shape the future. I'll give Janat Alfredos from India the final word. You should not forget who we are, how much ever we develop ourselves. Of course, development is important, very important, but yeah, we should always stay grounded. You've been listening to Beyond the Headlines. I've been your host, Kelsey Warner. If you've enjoyed this episode, please do subscribe. And if you have a minute, leave a review. Thanks this week to Paul Sams, Yekaterina Pribitkova, Severi Kanala, and Janet Alfredus. And thank you for listening. This week's episode was produced by Aisha Khan and Arthur Edison. 